This is a USB power sensor which can measure power levels between negative 35 dBm to plus 20 dBm which is exactly 100 milliwatts and uh, the frequency range covered by this device is 50 to 4000 megahertz. The real bonus point of this uh, sensor is of course that you can interface it with all kinds of uh, software so uh, while often if you if you have a mobile power meter or a field power meter um, you're often tied to to the sensors readouts and to the sensors uh, way of storing your measurements into files but uh, this sensor actually interfaces with uh, just about anything you can possibly think of uh, many circuits does provide um, documentation on how to interface with C++, C Sharp, uh, Delphi, LabVIEW, MATLAB. I think there's even some uh, Python scripts and of course Visual Basic. So uh, you pretty much get anything covered with that to integrate this into uh, automated test solutions uh, in the industry. And uh, reviewing a device like this is really difficult uh, because I don't know, it's, it's just my feeling. It's really difficult to uh, show plus points and negative points of a device like this. They really just come to light if you're actually actively using it in, in any sort of solution. So I'm just going to go briefly over the data sheet with you, talk a little bit about what this thing can do. Then uh, as you can see I got an analog devices uh, signal generating chip. There's the ADF4351 and we're going to generate different signal levels, uh, see what the what the sensor reads out and uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do now. Now if you unbox this device there's actually some really nice things in there. For instance one thing that was in there is this. Yes that's a little wrench for uh, for the SMA connectors and uh, that's pretty nice. Of course uh, if you really do some serious business you want to use a torque wrench uh, if you really if you're really serious about what you're doing but for normal field testing this wrench is of course more than sufficient so it's very nice if you have it in the original box and you just forgot your toolbox at home that's uh, very nice what's also in there in the box is the certificate of calibration and it shows you that this device passed all the specs down here um, every time when I look at a certificate of calibration I would really like to know what the parameters were. I would like to know what way of testing they used, what kind of generators were used to generate the calibration standard. Um, that's just a little little idea for many circuits to, I don't want to say improve, but maybe change their certificate of calibrations to include their testing methods a little bit more precise and to also include what their testing parameters were. Is, uh, to me at least this is something very important. Alright, now let's uh, generate some signals and with different power levels and see what the readout of this device is and let's particularly look at the frequency response of this device. I'm using the Analog Devices ADF4351 evaluation board as a signal generator for this test. Now it isn't really perfect because the power output isn't calibrated but uh, as you know I'm trying to keep everything within the budget of a hobbyist. So of course I could break out uh, a Rodan Sport signal generator here. Uh, well it's out of calibration but I'm pretty sure it's still pretty good. Definitely better than this eval board but let's just stick with this. We don't really care about the, the, the precision and all that. What we care about is the frequency response and things like that. Now another thing I am generating a continuous wave, a single tone signal here. Uh, the sensor is specifically made for measuring modulated signal. So, uh, so you can measure your uh, digitally modulated signals with the sensor no problem without affecting the readout. In the data sheet you're going to find a table that lays out very specifically what the parameters are and what your error tolerance is with every modulation scheme that you could possibly use. Okay, what you see on the screen right now is the standard analogs devices ADF4351 development boards software. What we have set the sensor, uh, the, the signal generator to is 2500 megahertz at a power level of 5 dBm. 
if we now swap over to the uh, mini circuit software we're seeing uh, 5.94 dBm and I believe this to be true or at least I believe it to be more accurate than the setting in the analog devices software because again uh, this ADF4351 is definitely not very accurate in that regards. You see a couple of things here. First thing is you see the device temperature. This is a parameter that's automatically filled in. Um, you can choose between dBm and we can have this displayed in watts or a smaller unit with uh, trailing watts. So right now we're putting out almost uh, 4 milliwatts. Uh, you can do some averaging over an almost uh, infinite amount of you can do some average over pretty much any amount of averages that you want to do you can put in an offset parameter so for instance you could measure out your, your cable attenuation at this value in here and then factor this out you can do a relative measurement so if we hit this relative button uh, right now, of course, it's jumping around a little bit. If we go back into our software, change the level down negative 2 dBm, in other words, difference of 3 dBm, we should see this now, and we do. We have almost 3 dBm here, less, so that's why we have a negative sign in front of it. And up here, we see a field labeled frequency. Now that is something you have to manually enter. The sensor does not automatically detect the frequency. This is not too bad. Um, I mean, it is an extra step. You don't normally do that with a power sensor. You do not normally add your frequency anywhere. But it's just, it's, it's really not a burden. Many circuits just trying to make sure that your measurement is more accurate than a normal sensor would be and we're gonna have a quick look at how it changes so uh, over frequency we're gonna go back we have 3 dBm output now so we're gonna go to relative and we're gonna change the frequency let's change it to the minimum of the sensor 50 dBm okay so uh, we're gaining 2 dB now it's 2 dBm sorry and if we go to the other end of the scale we are again at about 2 and a quarter dBm offset to our initial incorrect in measurement. This is really not too much. I mean, approaching 3 dBm gets you about double, obviously, but eh, really for that frequency range, that's perfectly fine. So you do have the option to put in a frequency, and it's highly recommended that you do, but if you really have to guesstimate your frequency, that's fine. For instance, let's go in the, in the TV world where you may have a uh, microwave gear and, and, and uh, being fed at an IF of uh, 70 megahertz. If you want to measure your 70 megahertz IF, uh, you can just put 70 megahertz in there without knowing the exact frequency. You know, if there's a little offset to the side, obviously you have to talk about accuracy of, of your oscillator there to begin with. But um, there are so many things where you can just guesstimate. I mean, if we really just move off a little bit, let's move move off uh, 400 megahertz. You know, this is almost insignificant. And the closer we get to the actual frequency, the more precise we get. So again, if you just know that, let's say your your Wi-Fi card is about at 2.4 gig, well, that's all you gotta put in 2,400, and you're gonna be golden. Um, you do have an option between faster and low noise and it appears that this is also some sort of averaging at faster your value jumps jumps around a lot especially on the least significant digit it seems to detect changes much faster that way too if you enable low noise that's a little bit more steady and we're still jumping around and the power probably does fluctuate here too you can put in several sensors you can actually record your data uh, there's a bunch of parameters you can specify for that. We're not going to go into that because that's too much detail. That's just supposed to be a, a quick review, a quick overview of what this thing can do. And that's going to be everything that I'm going to show you about the sensor. Like I said, really reviewing something like this is, is kind of tough and I didn't really want to. I just wanted to give you an overview of what this product is, what it does and what you may be able to use it for. Um, you can see a lot of the details in the data sheet and like I said the API interfaces are very well documented 
and if mini circuits allows me to keep this uh, sensor for a little bit longer obviously that is a uh, a demo that they uh, that they supply to the blog that I'm supposed to send back after I'm done with this but if they allow me to keep it a little bit longer I'm sure we'll actually put this into a practical setup and see what we can do with it I have a couple of ideas but uh, yeah I'm gonna have to talk to my mini circuits and see if I can keep this for a little bit longer now one thing I want to mention this is a true RMS sensor okay so it's not just good for your continuous wave single tone signal and like I said it's it's intended to be used with digital modulation schemes and the measurement uncertainty the power uncertainty is actually quite impressive the uh, typical uncertainty for QPSK MSK DQPSK 256 qualm and 4 qualm is all around about uh, plus minus 0.1 dB that's very impressive that's, uh, that's that's really really nice and like I said that's that's a level where you do need to know your frequency that's why you shouldn't think of having to enter the frequency as an extra burden this is really a feature to be able to get more accuracy uh, close to your target frequency of course you, you can correct all kinds of things uh, you know I mean many other sensors do not require you to put in a temperature value but they will stray quite a bit over their entire frequency range and here this sensor has an integrated correction factor for each frequency so as long as you're close to what your actual frequency is you're good so you don't need to get this as we shown earlier close to a megahertz or even tenth of megahertz as long as you put it about 100 megahertz or so close enough to your actual target frequency this uh, measurement is going to be pretty accurate 